Hey crew, I've got the key to this 22 Subaru BRZ Limited. We are gonna take it for a drive, but first let's check it out what looks on the inside and outside. So of course, the twin of the Toyota GR86, a video I already made. The differences stylistically are really just up here at front where we have the Subaru grille putting on a smiley face. GR86 is a little more straight laced. Both have these standard LED headlights and daytime running lights functional ventilation at the corners and on the BRZ we've got a front splitter in black. The paint job on this one is World Rally Blue Pearl. It's the best color for the car if you're asking me. The limited trim gets these 18 inch dark gray painted wheels, the wrapped in Michelin Pilot Sport 4 tires, 215 section at all four corners. Those are an upgrade over the 17 inch wheels and the Michelin Primacies. We've got a functional air curtain here on the side, body color matching door mirrors, black window trim, an extended skirt down low. Stepping back to look at the profile, it's just an ideal size. It doesn't look stubby like I thought the predecessor did. Not overly long, great wheelbase, gentle taper to that roof line. Some pronounced haunches at the rear, LED taillights, and integrated duckbill, duckbill spoiler. Unlike the GR86, you don't have an option for an extended spoiler black plastic diffuser down low, two circular exhaust ports. The car just looks great. I don't think it looks bad from any angle. I just think I like the GR86 a little better at the face. Let's check out that interior. Quick pause to show you overt rear camber of the rear wheels. I feel like I don't notice it to this extent on most production cars, but Subaru clearly went for it. Opening up and looking inside. This limited trim has a mix of suede inserted seats with perforations, dual stage heating, leather borders with red contrast stitching, nicely bolstered seats at that, suede up on this part of the door sill, hard plastics here, leatherette, more leatherette, nice padding on the armrest with red contrast stitching, one touch windows, power adjusting, not power folding door mirrors, aluminum pedals, press that button for the trunk release that doesn't really pop it up at all. Inside. We have six cubic feet of space. It's not cavernous, but when you fold down the rear seats, you've got enough space for full, four full size spare tires for your track duty. Some storage under here as well. To get to the back seats, if you want to call them seats, pull this lever and slide it forward. Oh, you have to go down there and pull the bar to actually slide it forward. And this is my seating position. There is no legroom back here. It wouldn't even matter if I could fit back there because my head would be on the roof. I know that because I did this in the GR86. If you want to see me labor to get back there, watch that video. Sliding in. There is a leather wrap steering wheel that's just the perfect size. Nice thickness, easy to wrap your hand around, red contrast stitching on the insides. There's a digital gauge cluster here, suede wrapping over that gauge cluster, eight inch touchscreen infotainment. With wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, I do like this system, it's very easy to use. The physical volume knob, tuner, and hotkeys on the side are welcomed. Dual zone auto climate control with a knurled finish around the dials. Leather shift boot with red contrast stitching for your six speed manual gearbox. You can also choose a six speed automatic. Physical handbrake, so much fun. Nicely padded armrest. Inside you find two cup holders and two USB-A ports. There are more cup holders in the doors. Visibility is pretty good. Large rear window, smallish side windows, but you got blind spot monitoring on this limited trim. The roof also has a nice doming to it. So it's six feet tall, I can fit with headroom, enough for me to put on a helmet at the track. This cabin is cozy, yes, but the material quality is good in all the places you're gonna touch and the dash feels recessed so it's not claustrophobic. I'm ready to take it for a drive. All right, let's fire it up. Good rumble from the Boxer 4. down goes the physical handbrake. just want to do this like all the time. You just don't get these analog inputs in cars these days. So good. So to go to reverse, we'll pull the ring in the middle, lever over and all the way up. 
that brings up a backup camera that takes over the whole eight inch screen. You do have trajectory lines and the resolution isn't that high. Let's do a turning radius test to start just in this parking lot. Wheel cranked. Honestly, expected a little tighter. It's still good, don't get me wrong, but for the size of the car, I want it tatter. Horn test? Wow. I think I'd forgotten <laughs> from the GR86 video how loud that horn was. Is it loud outside the car? I don't know, but inside the car, it's very loud. Speaking of, yes, I did do a GR86 driver view video. So I'm revisiting this car, this platform, this powertrain, this setup, but it's not a discovery of anything new. However, in the time since I drove the GR86, I've driven several of its competitors. So the reindoctrination to this setup is important. I can still if, see if Frankly, I like it as much as I did. Let's begin by discussing that engine. We've got a 2.4 liter, naturally aspirated, boxer four cylinder, it makes 228 horsepower and 184 pound feet of torque. Notable increases over the predecessor BRZ and 86. And significantly, the peak torque comes in from just 3,700 RPM. And there's not that torque dip. When accelerating, you're not sitting there waiting for the torque to come back in so you can get back to having fun. The engine feels lively throughout the rev range. Speaking of lively, the, sh the chassis is so well dialed and the steering is so quick. The turn in is immediate and precise. The weight of the rack is perfect. You can't help but smile. And you don't have to be going that fast to have a good time. That's what I love in theory about affordable performance cars, the low speed fun. But theory is just theory until you're driving something like this that's just this good. And you know, I really knocked the Boxer 4 soundtrack when I was in that GR86. judged it too harshly because yeah in the mid part of rev range I don't like the soundtrack it sounds whiny but in the upper part of the range it's got its own sweetness its own appeal and appeal is really the right word for this gearbox I mean just hopping right out and immediately hopping out of the Subaru WRX right before this and feeling like I liked that transmission. The throws felt kind of long though and I chalked it up to the fact that the lever was pretty tall but I think this is just so much notchier and more precise. There was probably too much play in that gearbox relative to this one. This is like a revelation by comparison. This is what a six-speed should feel like. 
It's the crispness of it. The pedal placement is perfect for those heel toe downshifts as well. And I, I love the brake pedal tuning. Gosh, it just gives you this confidence as you're slowing. That and the fact that the car doesn't weigh any more than 2,834 pounds. It's easy to slow down. And every part of the, I'm gonna make it, don't worry. Every part of the driving experience is brimming with communication. And that, as an enthusiast, is perfection. But how quick is the BRZ to 60 miles per hour? Let's find out. We are gonna find out right now. I've got my race box all set up here. We've got a bit of a downhill. That's gonna help us out. Six though, it still would have been under six even on a flat level surface, that's for sure. So 5.6 is quick, folks. And I'm honestly not surprised. This car feels quick. And it even rides nice as a daily driver. When you settle things down, the suspension stays firm, you jostle over bumps, but the hits aren't hard. It is not a harsh riding vehicle. Completely livable, and if you're willing to put up with in traffic having to shift your own gears, it's just worth it for the manual compared to the automatic. Your fuel economy isn't great. 20 city, 27 highway, 22 combined with the manual. If you go with the automatic, you are going to get three more miles per gallon. You're just giving up so much of the engagement that's available in this car that I don't think it's worth it. The seats are really comfy as well. They hold me snug in place for cornering, but they're not squeezing my sides in any uncomfortable way. My only complaints, real earnest complaint from a daily driving standpoint, is that the cabin isn't anywhere close to quiet. Once you're up to speed, above like 45 miles per hour, as we'll see when we get on the highway, it's just flat out loud. Loud! So loud! You get it from all three categories. It's tire noise, it's road noise, it's wind noise. And it's irritating. That's really my only critique that I have. Because this car is just, it's a hoot. It's reasonably practical with the rear seats that you don't put people in, but you fold them down, you've got stuff that fits, it looks cool. It drives so well. The BRZ GR86, whichever you think looks better, is a killer dynamic duo. And I just applaud the whole automotive industry right now for offering us so many affordable enthusiast vehicles. We're living in a killer age to come of age to be able to drive these cars. But is the BRZ or GR86 the right way to go about it? And I mean, the price differential between the two cars is like less than $300. So really, just pick whichever one you think looks better or which badge you're more loyal to. But these cars start just under $29,000. This one has tested the limited trim, which I do think is worth it for the stuff you get, is $31,400. Compare that to the Honda Civic Si at $28,315. You're saving money there, 
but you're losing out on some performance. So 200 horsepower for that one. It is a four door, so you have extra practicality, rear seats that you can actually use. It's front drive, so different driving experience. The zero to 60 is significantly slower, 6.8 seconds for that one. So more than a second off the pace, according to what we just did for the BRZ. Fuel economy is way better for that car though. I think it's 29 combined, 31 combined. I'll have it in the card. Then we've got the Mazda MX-5 Miata. Same price as the Civic Si, $28,315. Makes 181 horsepower, so less power, but it weighs less, and so the zero to 60 is about the same. 5.7 seconds, they say. Fuel economy is great in that car. Again, I cannot remember the figure off the top of my head. It's 29, maybe? 31? Who knows? It is way less practical, though, than the BRZ GR86 or the Civic Si. And then finally, speaking of practicality, the most practical vehicle in the segment, and in my opinion, possibly the best looking. I just have this affinity for hot hatchback body styles. The Volkswagen Golf GTI. That's 30,500 to start. It's a little more money than the base BRZ. It makes more power, 241 horsepower. It gets to 60 quicker from its front drive platform in 5.4 seconds and the fuel economy is better for that one as well yet again i can't remember the fuel economy figure it will be in the specs which would i choose two options two two situations if practicality is super important to me if i need a set of rear seats i'm gonna go get that golf gti and i'm gonna put up with the infuriating infotainment system because it looks cool it drives really well and it's, it's just really quick. If practicality doesn't matter quite as much, and I mean just like a little less, because if I would put up with not having rear seats, there is nothing that would keep me from getting one of these cars, the BRZ or the GR86, and I would choose the GR86 just for my preference for how the face looks. I just, get so much out of the driving experience. I prefer the hard top look to the Miata soft top. You get that extra practicality over the Miata. The power feels right for this car. It's, it's a huge, huge win in my book. And guys, if you're considering it, you will not be disappointed. If you guys enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and share it. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell to get notified. And I'll see you next time.